Hi everybody, uh, I'm Ifat Afek. I'm here together with Sigalit Eliazov. We are senior software engineers in Nokia and WDAF team. And we are going to present uh, how BIM is used in Nokia and WDAF distributed architecture. Uh, so uh, in this uh, session, we will uh, describe Nokia and WDAF in general. We will uh, briefly go over its architecture we will uh, describe the requirements we had uh, for the streaming uh, pipeline and the challenges we were facing while we were working on the implementation. Um, then we will go through an example of a use case and how we are using BIM in Nokia and WDAF, Edge and Central uh, parts. So what is uh, Nokia and WDAF? Uh, NWDAF stands for Network Data Analytics Function. It's a component which is defined by the 3GPP, that is the telco standard organization, uh, for the 5G core architecture. It's, it's over here, it's part of the 5G um, network functions, and it is responsible for uh, providing analytics information over the network. Uh, its role is uh, to provide the unified network analytics information for multiple network functions in order to support network automation and optimization. The NWDAF leverages artificial intelligence and machine learning to process and analyze large amounts of data, enabling the network to better respond to varying uh, demands and conditions. The primary responsibilities of NWDAF include, uh, first of all, uh, collecting and storing data from other network functions, um, then processing and analyzing this data to generate useful insights, and providing these insights to other network functions uh, so the other network functions uh, can operate more efficiently based on the uh, uh, predictions uh, provided by NWDAF. Uh, it helps automate uh, management for a variety of network optimization tasks, uh, for example, uh, load balancing, traffic prediction, network slice management, and anomaly detection. Here is a, a very high level uh, architecture of NWDAF. Uh, we have two parts of the implementation. Uh, this, on the left side, you can see the edge, and on the right side, you can see the central. Uh, the edge is responsible for uh, data collection, processing, and notifications from uh, NWDAF and for other network functions. The central is uh, used for uh, the central data repositories, uh, machine learning, models, training, um, and we have the data flow pipelines over here. Um, the central is uh, currently um, running uh, on uh, GCP. Um, and um, let, let's go over the, the edge, which is the main part that is uh, relevant for the, the pipelines. Uh, it has uh, several uh, layers. Um, we see here the analytics consumption layer, the data processing layer, and the data collection layers. Um, the, the analytics consumption layer is the API. The API is defined by the 3GPP standard that I mentioned earlier. It has uh, three APIs. One of them is the subscribe API. It allows other network functions to ask NWDAF for specific predictions. The subscription has several parameters, uh, several use cases um, that the network functions might be interested in. And based on, the, on these parameters, the pipelines are later on configured to respond to the uh, predictions that are required. Um, then there is the API of the subscription notification that is sent back to the network functions by NWDAF. And the third API that we have is of the analytics info, which allows ad hoc queries over the central repository data uh, for later on an analyzing the data, um, and that's it. Um, this is the, the uh, consumption layer. Then there is the data processing layer. Um, since uh, NWDAF defines several use cases, each use case has several pipelines that are running, and each pipeline um, has different configuration options. Um, so the use case manager over here um, 
allows, uh, is responsible for deploying and configuring the pipelines based on the use cases that are required uh, by, the, by the network functions or by the system that is being deployed. Um, uh, and uh, some of the Nokia, uh, some of the uh, NWDAF pipelines are similar in their logic but are configured differently. Some pipelines are different than others and uh, everything is managed by the use case manager. In here we see the, the BIM pipeline which is based on Flink Runner. Uh, of course we will describe it in more details later on. And another service that we have in the data processing lay layer is the machine learning inference model. Um, the, machine the, the inference model is responsible for um, uh, receiving information from the BIM pipeline and providing the predictions based on the machine learning model that it, uh, it has. Um, be below, um, below we have the data collection layer. Um, it has the data source sync that co uh, can collect uh, information from different um, network functions, uh, data sources management. Uh, we have the generic data collector, which is responsible for uh, collecting inputs from uh, different kinds of um, sources. For example, the, the, OM, um, the OM information, which is statistical information over the network performance. Uh, it can, get, it can uh, uh, process uh, CSV files, XML files, or UDP messages, different kinds of information. Uh, we, are, we know that um, BIM also has connectors for these kinds of information, but uh, we wanted to, to keep the separation of layers, so we decided that all the data collectors will be handled separately and not as part of the BIM pipeline. Uh, in BIM, we are using uh, all the best that BIM can offer. We are using uh, um, uh, we are using uh, joins and states and uh, enrichments and timers and windows of different kinds and uh, filtering and grouping and everything else. Um, and this is just the collection of the data. Um, uh, in addition, um, we have the data flow pipelines that are also written uh, by BIM, uh, and they are responsible for uh, transferring information both uh, from the, that is collected by the sources and the predictions uh, to the data repositories, so it later on can be used for improving and retraining the, the data models. Some other technologies that are used, uh, we are using uh, Kafka uh, to communicate between the different services, um, and we are using PubSub when we are sending information to the central. Uh, the information is uh, sent uh, in Avro classes for efficiency and is managed by a schema registry for um, schema, supporting schema evolution. Um, a bit about the requirements we had for the uh, uh, data pipelines. Um, so we had quite a few. Uh, first of all, of course, we need to be able to process large volumes of streaming data in near real-time performance. Uh, we create complex event processing. Uh, we have uh, data integrated from different uh, data sources that are being sent in different frequencies. We will describe it in details later on. Uh, we need to calculate KPIs uh, based on data that comes as well in different uh, velocity. Um, we need to support several use cases. I already mentioned it. And each use case with several pipelines. Um, the, the pipelines should be configurable as much as possible. Uh, the logic is sometimes similar. Uh, for example, uh, again, we will describe it later. Um, a, a pipeline that performs calculation over specific input uh, counters. Uh, different use cases can use different counters and do different calculations, but the basic behavior is the same. So we want to make this part configurable. Um, 
one of the main reasons, uh, and I think most of these bullets explain why we selected BIM uh, to run our pipelines, but one of the major one is that we wanted to run it, uh, to, to be able to run it on different runners. Currently we are using Flink for the edge pipelines and Dataflow for the central pipelines. Uh, and it's very convenient to write all the pipelines in the same way. Um, regarding the scalability, of course, I mentioned we need to support very high scale, but the scale might be different between different pipelines, so we want it to be flexible per pipeline. Um, we are integrating with other um, technologies, Kafka, Redis, Yugabyte, and PubSub. Of course, BIM supports them. Uh, we need the monitoring and debugging capabilities. And we are not running everything on top of Kubernetes with a service mesh. And now, Sigalit, please. Okay, so uh, let's review on uh, some example of uh, analytics use case. Uh, in this example, we see that uh, the, there is the data collection layer, Rifat mentioned, that sensors all the inputs that are relevant to our pipeline via Kafka. In our data processing layer, there are several inputs that we receive from different network functions. Uh, so the first one here we see is the subscription that uh, arrives once per user equipment. User equipment is uh, could be a mobile device or a drone or any other uh, device that is connected to the network. So this subscription happens uh, usually once uh, when uh, the network function requests this service. So it's a sort of, of a relatively static information. Another type of information that we receive is from the mobility function. Uh, this uh, service sends us an, a notifications and event each time the location of the UE changes uh, in case if it moves. It could be varying the frequency for ex if, uh, for example, is drive the U mobility, the UE, sorry, is driving or in a bus. So it could be a uh, event, few events per second, or if he's at work at the office and uh, he's not moving a lot, then it could be in one event in a few hours, and it's uh, very random. And the another type of information that we have is the information from the operation, administration, maint and maintenance. It's a network performance statistics that uh, is loaded from a file every you, every time that is defined by the system, it could be every 15 minutes, an hour, and et cetera, depending on the use case. Um, so all these inputs are, uh, are received by the pipeline. Uh, as uh, we mentioned, on the edge, we have uh, pipelines running over Flink. The pipeline, uh, out, the output of the pipeline is, uh, is basically the prediction. Uh, we uh, go to the inference in order to uh, uh, query it and uh, find the and calculate the relevant prediction. The prediction is sent in, uh, it's sent out uh, one is to the output, to the uh, analytics exposure uh, via Kafka, analytics consumption layer. And also it's sent to the uh, PubSub uh, in order to store the data in the central data repository. The information from the PubSub uh, um, is goes via a NWDAF uh, data flow that we uh, created uh, using BIM. Uh, the, this uh, data flow is responsible for taking the data, transforming it, enrich it, and put it to the BigQuery. So you can see here that uh, the challenges we had in this pipeline is that uh, um, the inputs are different types different uh, sources and different frequencies. So how do we join, how do we intersect this information and verify that we have them all at once so we can eventually send the prediction? There, are, there were different uh, solutions that we tried. Uh, for example, we tried to use custom windows, where, where in custom windows you can uh, control when the window is being closed and opened according to some logic. Uh, we also tried side inputs um, and uh, states, but eventually the solution we used is uh, based on uh, states and timers, and uh, we will review. And we will review it now. Okay, so this is a schematic description of our pipeline. 
Uh, here in the left side, you see all the inputs that uh, this pipeline receives. Uh, and as we mentioned before, all the, inf all the inputs are arriving from, the, from Kafka. And, uh, and also on the right side, you see all the outputs. Uh, some of the outputs are sent via Kafka, and some of the outputs go to the uh, PubSub uh, to eventually to the central. OK. So the first input that we have is the subscription request. Uh, the subscription request arrives when the network function wants to subscribe to the service. Uh, as we said, this is like a, a pretty static information. We receive it only once, so we have a state that has this information, uh, and we define a timer for it. Uh, so uh, it could be preserved uh, and live long all, all, all over, the, I mean, as long as we have the pipeline uh, uh, running. Uh, the other we have is the location changes, uh, which is uh, on a specific UE as we mentioned. It's uh, the, uh, whenever the user moves, we receive an event, and we said it uh, could be very random, could be seconds, minutes, et cetera. Um, so here we have the, the mapping between the user equipment uh, information and the subscription. With this mapping later on, we use in order to identify which network function should be notified once a new prediction uh, is calculated. The other information that we have is the OM counter. As we mentioned before, this is the file that arrives with all the statistics. Um, the, OM, uh, the OM counters contains raw data that later on we are calculating, we are activating here different transforms. Um, uh, and in this example, the inference service requests uh, uh, KPIs from the last uh, OM, four OM files. Um, so let's say an example, if OM file is generated every 15 minutes, then inference should get uh, KPIs from the last hours. And this is, of course, configurable, and we can define the, the duration, and we define the number of samples, and, and, the, and the different counters. So how we solve this, uh, this uh, issue? We defined here a sliding window. Uh, each uh, x minutes, for in our example, each 15 minutes, we're opening a new window for a duration of an hour. And when the window, the window is closed, then we send to the uh, inference the last four samples and send it via Kafka. The inference calculates the prediction and send it back to the pipeline via Kafka again. So here we also have a listener that receives the information, the input from a prediction. And then here we, ha we, are, we have a matching between the prediction, the UE location, and the subscription information. Once we have a match, we send the notification to the subscriber uh, via the exposure layer that we mentioned before and via Kafka and et cetera. Uh, in case there is no match, then uh, the information is not sent back. Um, in a parallel, all this information is also sent via PubSub to the data flow. Um, and in the data flow, we send the location information, the prediction, and the raw data from the OM file. Uh, this uh, data is used uh, later on uh, to the machine learning, learning training that uh, is being uh, activated in the central. One important thing that uh, worth mentioning on the data flow is that since part of the data that we have could be a personal data, uh, so from privacy consideration where uh, this data cannot be uh, sent in the central repository, then we are using the uh, DLP service, which is the data loss prevention that allows us to anonymize the data and then only then send it to BigQuery so the data there is anonymized and, and uh, we are uh, aligned with the GDPR regulation. Um, so in most of the cases, uh, if you see here, we are using a global windows except for the sliding window that we was calculated here. So. Um, but in global window, there is a problem that uh, uh, the data is uh, being kept uh, like forever. Uh, so we need to uh, take that into consideration and carefully manage the state and make sure that uh, the data is discarded and deleted when it's not needed anymore and it's not valid anymore. 
So in order to, uh, to handle that, we defined timers. So they are used in, we are using timer for two things. One is to preserve the data as long as the certain, as long as the certain condition is valid. And when the condition is expired, we verify that we clean the information. So for example, if uh, we receive after a while uh, unsubscribe request from the network function, then in that case, we don't need to send a notification anymore. So in that case, we have a timer that receives this information and cleans up all the relevant states. For another example, in this state, in this mapping, if we didn't receive uh, any location changes in the last 24 hours, we assume that uh, this UE was disconnected from the network, so we also clear its state. Uh, so it depends on the on the uh, use case, and of course, uh, this timer conf is also configurable and can be changed uh, when the use when the pipeline is deployed. Okay, a few words about uh, some uh, deployment and operation aspects. We are using uh, we are using the Flink Kubernetes operator in order to deploy uh, the pipelines. Um, the, currently, the, the way we are using it is, is that uh, the, the Kubernetes uh, operator runs on its own namespace, and the BIM pipelines are, uh, may run. This is uh, currently our, uh, our, the way the, that we deploy it, but uh, it, ca it can be run in the same namespace or in uh, different namespaces. Um, we have decided to go with the application mode that each pipeline is installed and deployed on different Flink cluster in a different uh, but they are all in the name in the same uh, client namespace. The reason we def decided to go with the application mode because we identified that we have different types of uh, of pipelines and with different uh, requirements, different scale requirements, different uh, configurations. And, uh, so it will be easier to uh, maintain, monitor, and uh, maybe also adjust uh, the scaling of each pipeline separately. And about the uh, monitoring of the pipeline, uh, we all know this is uh, usually the main uh, problem when uh, we have uh, streaming pipelines with high scale. So in order to understand what happens in the pipeline, we use the Flink built-in metrics, but also we added uh, applicative metrics using a Beam custom metrics uh, module. And uh, all these metrics are exported uh, via OpenTelemetry uh, to the GCP. Uh, to the Google Cloud, and then we there we have defined the uh, different uh, dashboards uh, that allows us to monitor the pipeline, and uh, and also uh, uh, we can define different alarms and uh, see if we have issues. Thank you.